Hey, Dr. C here with you. This video is going to be all about thyroid function and mental health and understanding the connection. There's a really big tie-in, and many who struggled with mental health symptoms have thyroid disease that's solely or largely affecting their symptoms. And many struggle trying treatments that might make sense, but not getting benefit because their thyroid is not being addressed as the true cause. For starters, let's talk about a quick overview about thyroid function and its role in the body. The thyroid makes a couple of key hormones, uh, T3, T4, and these control metabolic rate. Now, T4 is also made into a thing called reverse T3. And reverse T3 is made outside the thyroid in the circulation, but also within the brain. And it turns out reverse T3 is critical for maintaining brain health and brain cell repair. But a balance between all these thyroid hormones is necessary for nerve conduction and especially relevant to how the brain is working. Now, let's talk about the main things that go wrong with the thyroid. And the common term is just when the thyroid is sluggish. And what is a sluggish thyroid? I really want to define what's hypothyroidism and distinguish that from subclinical hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism is where there's just too little thyroid hormone. There's not enough for the body or the brain's needs as a generality. So subclinical hypothyroidism is a specific level to where the TSH levels have elevated, but there's still T4. There's a worse level called overt hypothyroidism. That's where TSH is elevated and T4 and T3 are very low then there's clearly a deficit. So when these things happen, we see certain symptoms of a sluggish thyroid. And that can include fatigue, uh, brain fog, weight gain, unexplained depression, anxiety. So many big effects upon the brain, the mood. The most common cause for the thyroid being sluggish or not working right are autoimmune diseases. And these are most commonly Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. These affect every part of the body, but again, especially the brain, big effects upon that. So what happens there is that when thyroid hormones are not in their exact healthy window, the brain can't work right. You know, our brain is understimulated in hypothyroidism or overstimulated in hyperthyroidism. And both of these can completely change mood and cognitive function and causing a lot of common symptoms. So things like depression or anxiety or irritability. There have been many, many examples of people who were misdiagnosed as having just unresolved depression. In fact, one study took people that were diagnosed with depression and treated for years with medications and talk therapy, but were not improving. And so it took these people and very carefully screened them for thyroid disease. What they found was that for many of them, oh yeah, they had obvious thyroid disease. So they were then treated and removed from the study. A remaining group who didn't have obvious forms of thyroid disease was given thyroid medication. So the thought was, maybe there's some way their thyroid is affecting their symptoms, but we can't see it as easily. So they were simply given thyroid medication presumptively. And of them, the vast majority had relief from their depression for the first time throughout the whole history of their treatment. So yeah, there's a very strong correlation that way. And what we see is that the main connection is inflammation. When there's not the right amounts of thyroid hormone, there's this chronic low level of inflammation in the brain. And we see the brain doesn't repair itself properly, and it can't have the right communication between the nerve cells. So quite simply, the brain is tired, you know, so the thoughts are slower, the mood is lower, enthusiasm and ambition have been negatively impacted. And then there's more vicious cycles where sleep starts to become affected. So many with abnormal thyroid levels, they can't get proper deep sleep. And that means their brain has less of a chance of repairing itself and managing these chronic low levels of inflammation. And there's also then a big overlap between the symptoms. So many with thyroid disease have symptoms like depression. And then also having thyroid disease and having fatigue from it can change what one does in one's life. People do less, they engage socially more, they're outdoors less, they're less physically active. And these things in turn can either cause depression by itself or worsen it if it's already there. And the other side of this is anxiety. And an important thing to know is that too much or too little thyroid hormone can cause similar symptoms. So depression and anxiety can go together or somebody could have more of one or more of another. Now, a classic relationship would be low thyroid causing depression, excess thyroid causing anxiety. 
That can totally happen. But one could have low thyroid and anxiety, or low thyroid and anxiety and depression, or high thyroid and depression. So any way it's off, it can be a big driver of some combination of these symptoms. If you have mental health symptoms, if there's not been clear causes, or you've not responded in ways that have been helpful to common treatments, it's really worth thinking about your thyroid as being a possible culprit. And the first step for that is by screening thyroid function. That involves blood tests, lab tests, and this allows us to get an evaluation of how well the thyroid's working and how well these hormones are being circulated and utilized. The important things to check are the TSH, the T4, free T4 is preferable, T3, total T3 is a little bit better, and then thyroid antibodies. And I want to restate my point about too much or too little both being possible causes of almost any symptoms. I want to add one more important point. So if you have high thyroid antibodies, they can cause all these problems even if your thyroid levels are otherwise normal. This is called euthyroid or stable thyroid autoimmune thyroid disease or euthyroid Hashimoto's. And it can cause depression, anxiety, weight gain, also various health risks. In many cases, doctors don't check for antibodies, or if they do, they'll say they don't matter and there's really no treatments for them. Neither of those statements align with what we know from medical research. We've got lots of data showing that when antibodies are high, no matter how good TSH, T3, T4 are, we can still see symptoms and health risks, and there are safe ways that can be benefited. So along that vein, I wanna start talking about ways to help. You know, the first is just getting specialized care, you know, getting second opinions. Have someone else take a look at this if your current team has been unable to find any solutions. And thinking through strategies that can support your thyroid function because that can make a big difference for mental health. For starters, the diet and lifestyle are huge. There's certain nutrients that people need for their thyroid to work that they're often low in. The big three would be selenium, iron, and zinc. And then paradoxically, there's a nutrient your thyroid needs that you can easily get too much of, and that one is iodine. So being aware of not getting too little selenium, iron, and zinc, and be cautious about there being an excess intake of iodine are some of the biggest things you can do nutritionally. Many other facets of self-care are also important. There's good data about stress management, reducing thyroid symptoms, cutting the risk of developing thyroid disease, and helping people respond better to any existing thyroid treatments. And there's good evidence behind that. So things like breathing exercises, regular meditation, you know, having more social connections, uh, having some kind of a sense of spiritual meaning, you know, whether that's more secular or more religious, these things are very powerful. But it's also worth considering that nutrients can be useful. When the thyroid's not working ideally, there's good evidence that the right nutraceuticals in the right amounts can help to correct its function. This is why thyroid-specific formulations was formed. I made all the combinations based upon high-quality human studies showing that certain things could help. So I just took all the things from studies and combined them and used the same amounts found in the studies. Safe ingredients that make a real big difference that way. So there's been studies showing that overall, thyroid hormones can make a big difference. And those who have been on medications like SSRIs, if they're not responding or not doing well, there has been studies in which thyroid hormones have been given along with SSRIs. And for some people, this has been life-changing. So please know that if you're on a mental health journey and it's been hard to really benefit, you know, if you've tried medications, tried talk therapy, not seen the benefits that others had or what you were hoping for, your thyroid could be part of this. And sometimes it's the icing on the cake. It's the one more step that made a big difference and helped turn things around. Other times, it's pretty much the cake. And there's many people to where once their thyroid health has been regained, they don't really need to be on a mental health journey anymore. So, so yeah, if you struggled with symptoms of anxiety or depression, you've tried a lot of things, not seen clear benefit, please consider getting a more detailed evaluation for your thyroid. And never give up because there are solutions that are available. All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care. I'll see you really soon.